Yeah, some days I feel unfazed Like when I'm with my friends with a cup raised And hey. on Monday, I got a gun raised Suicidal, do a dime till hump day Then I go right back at it like an automatic More drinks, more songs, more beats to rap I need a shrink, I'm gone More time keeps passing, no watch, no thoughts at all Just a hat, new era Get my P's and O's, O's Need a Phillies with my orange and black to feel home From Citizens Bank back to Camden Yard Just a tale of two cities and trust we go hard Trust we go hard, yes we go hard You said we go hard, I said we go hard, rockin' my Bob Cousy, stockin' up on the loose, did the lyrics come easy, but the life is a doozy, and yes, I'm choosy, and no, I won't settle, but I still take pop off over that kettle, cause I'm talking bigger picture, and yes, I'm gonna hit you with... If I ever see you on the street, I'm gonna knock you out, you f***ing hoofty! Everyone knows that some of the best movies and TV shows have come out of Australia. In the same way that America has Hollywood and India has Bollywood, we have Collingwood. And that means that over the years there's been some great TV shows to come out of Australia. Australia gave birth to such classics as A Current Affair, Channel 9 News, Channel 7 News, Better Homes and Gardens, Whatever the fuck this is, and of course, the topic of today's video, which is two TV shows that are exactly the same, besides the fact that they're owned by two different networks. As you know, rivalries between two companies is a good thing. Take Apple vs Samsung as an example. Everyone knows that Apple is better than Android, even though Apple uses Samsung parts. And as you guessed, RBT vs Highway Patrol is the exact same story. The classical TV show format of sending a camera crew out with the police on a Saturday night never gets old. And the fact that both of these networks are actively out looking for Australia's most cooked unit behind the wheel, it makes for some cracking TV. But now, it's time for me to stop the waffle, because we're about to go through some of the best moments from Australia's greatest TV show. First up, we have Australia's most famous one-liner, and that is... I'm just waiting for a mate. Senior Constable Ash bowed and got a call one night that someone was ripping skids and ended up stacking it. When he arrived in the Caram Downs car park, it wasn't hard to find out who the culprit was. Little did he know, that night, he would meet Clinton. When Clinton was asked, What happened, mate? He replied, I'm just waiting for a mate. But believe it or not, Ash Bowden didn't believe him. Although, Clinton put on an Oscar-worthy performance. How did the collision with your car happen, mate? What collision? Something straight out of Better Call Saul, the fact that he was sitting in the driver's seat gave him away. After a bit of an argument and a failed attempt to convince the police that his name was James. Well, what's your name? Let's start with that. James. Which was coincidentally the same name of the mate he was supposedly waiting for. Who's your mate? James. The police managed to confirm that his name was in fact Clinton and that his license was currently suspended from drink driving. You wouldn't believe it. Now this next one has to be my favourite defect of all time. As you can see here, my boy Matthew gets pulled over for his slammed VX. After he confirms that he is unaware of his bald rear tyres... Have you seen how bad the back tyres are? Negative. He gets out of the car, has a quick shadow box, and confirms that he comes in peace. While the police officer writes up his defect notice, he cracks a few jokes... Came warns bald of them. Cops the defect... Practices his Wingardium Leviosa. He then rogers that, Roger, Roger that and asks the policewoman out on a date. What about the date? Unfortunately for Matthew and the policewoman, she said no and sends the stud on his way. Next up, we have Australia's most sober driver. Now you might look at this guy and think to yourself, he doesn't look too sober, but that's where you're wrong because this breathalyzer result doesn't lie. After he passes the breath test with flying colours, the police decide they might need to take him back to the police station for a blood and saliva test. Now obviously this test is pointless because they've already proved that he's stone cold sober, but he agrees to go anyway, under one condition, that they do it tomorrow. Now unfortunately the police didn't take up his offer to come back in the morning, so they cut him off to the cop shop, but not after he gave out some good life advice. While we're briefly on the topic of sober drivers, we'll get into our next driver. This man got pulled over and breath tested at the start of a two and a half hour drive from Anna Bay back to Sydney. Now despite the open and half drunk bottle of bourbon in the cup holder, this guy also blew zero. Now you may think that that doesn't make any sense at all, but it does. You see, this man was only drinking when stopped at a red light. Therefore, he wasn't drinking and driving. 
Due to the fact that he wasn't technically intoxicated, all the police could do was make him get out of the car, do some cardio, and send him back on his way. The next two stories both involve motorised bikes. This guy here was just casually riding his motorised bike down the freeway until his leisurely cruise was cut short by this police officer. Unfortunately, it's illegal to ride motorised bikes in Australia, but this guy didn't seem too phased, and the fact that they find him didn't seem to bother him at all. Now this next guy was also on a motorised bike. Like the guy before him, he was just going for a leisurely cruise down the footpath until some wanker in a Commodore tries to take him out. Now although this is normal Commodore driving, he was very relieved to find out that it wasn't just some random meth head, but it was actually the police. But unfortunately, that relief was cut short. He was slapped with a fine in order to walk the bike home. But luckily for him, thanks to the fact that he tested positive for methamphetamine, the walk home would have been a breeze. And who said meth isn't good for society? Because on the way home, he decided he'd drop his bike in at Salvo's. So what's going to happen to the bike now? I'll probably drop it off at the Salvo's on the way home. Now it's time to do a complete 180 and talk about push bikes without engines. This guy here, as innocent as he may seem, had six warrants out for his arrest. And it's clear to see why they needed to send half of Melbourne's police force after this one man. After being cleaned up on his push bike by another Commodore driver, somehow he avoided breaking any bones, managed to jump up and hit legs. For a second there, I liked his chances of getting away, but unfortunately, due to the lack of shoes, he was quickly run down and tackled by the police. But unlike any of the other Australian icons I've mentioned in this video, this guy deserved to be arrested. You see, while he may have not been wearing any underwear, I've only got pants on me, no jocks, that's it. There was a much bigger problem at hand. You see, according to this man, down his pants was a weapon of mass destruction. Weapon of destruction, my pants. <laughs> now this one we're about to get into is my personal favourite. This man here got stung by an RBT and blew over the limit. Since he's not allowed to drive home, he's left with an ultimatum. Option one is walk home and leave the car there. And option two is to call up a mate to come drive it home. Now this guy chose for option two, which would be my choice as well. But the best part about this story is the driver that he chose. This is the man he chose to be his ride home. His name is Dave. Now despite his very normal display of behavior, the police decided to give him a drug test. And what do you know, he tests positive for methamphetamine. As shocking as this revelation may be to the audience, old mate Dave couldn't give a single fuck. After a bit of yapping, they decided to send him home. But for some odd reason, they wouldn't let him drive. Anyway, I hope this video helped convince you that RBT and Highway Patrol are the best TV shows ever made. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment and share if you'd like to hear more wisdom from the prophet of Uncle Yorak. And a special shout out to Del Optiplex for donating a whopping 50 schmackaroos. But I want to say thank you as well to these people for their donations. I've already spent it all on plastic cutlery. And if you enjoyed this video so much that you stuck around right till the end, comment just waiting for a mate to let me know.